Good morning everyone, new video. So yesterday I went around um, collecting uh, materials in the form of sleepers. I bought lots of them, 30 of them in fact. And uh, I've got a lot of projects planned for them. It cost me quite a bit of money, um, but it's gonna be a good investment. You know, it's good investment in materials uh, that's gonna do a lot of projects for me. So let's go and have a look what I've got. So here's what I've got. I've got 30 hardwood sleepers. now. Throughout this video and throughout the series of using this, I'm going to mention this a lot because no matter what I do, someone always says the same thing. Right, I'm going to say it now and I'll say it again many times during this video. These are not treated, okay? So I'll say it again, not treated. They are untreated hardwood sleepers, okay? They don't have creosote in them. They don't have oil in them. They're not treated. They're naturally durable sleepers. Right, so we get that out of the way. So they're exotic hardwood sleepers that are hundreds of years old already, mostly Australian, some African, um, and they're uh, used, reclaimed, whatever you want to call it, and it's a lot of work processing them and everything, but you get some amazing timber out of it that you can't really get, um, certainly not for the money. Let's try and get some of these unloaded. Now, if you don't know, these are uh, around about 100 kilos each. They're 12 by 5 hardwood sleepers. Yeah, about 100 maybe. Some of them more, some of them less, depending on which ones they are. Right, got a nice pile of uh, posts milled up. Gonna run them through the planer. It's not easy, they're about 45 kilos each, so not easy work. Let's get to it. Planing's going well, planing's running nice. Loads of power today, it's getting a bit dusty in here. And uh, the outside of these ain't that good, so put a nice pink mask on. But the wood's beautiful, it's got this like tiger type pattern to it, it's really cool. Um, yeah, so I've uh, jointed or planed two surfaces, now do the other two to a thickness up from underneath. It is not easy going, I can tell you. Oh, dear me. Right, I've made this little stand just to put the weight a little bit as they come out. Just move that. Do four at a time. Oh, the bird's just flown in here. Oh no. Oh no, look what just happened. Right, I'm going to help him out. Got him. Seems all right. Take him back out. He's just stunned. We're going to put him somewhere safe to recover. Poor little thing's a bit dazed. Uh, put him down in the shade near the stream so he can get a drink. But I'm just going to leave him because I think I'm causing him uh, to get panicked. All right, the little bird's recovering by the stream. Cat's not about at the minute, so should be all right down there. I'll go and check on it in a minute. There's only so much you can do in there really. Bit of a shame. I think it'll be alright though, it uh, seems okay. Alright, oh, making a good old mess of the workshop here. 
swimming in sawdust but that's okay got uh, quite a few done I'm gonna do another four through the plane and then I need to mill some more um, but there you go oh it's bright isn't it yeah well what's that I think 10 10 posts there so that's good happy with that little birds recovered and flown off so I'm happy about that poor little thing uh, but yeah gonna run these other two uh, sorry other four through and do a bit more milling um, lots to do and then I'm gonna have to blow all this workshop out get all the dust out of it need a dust extractor big time gotta get one hey everyone so it's been a couple of weeks since I started this video I've got a friend coming to help me uh, pass these big bits of timber through the planer so my bit of a bad back makes it a bit difficult um, so I'm just gonna mill some taking it easy uh, just doing them slow and steady and uh, we get a bit, all these milled up stacked up planed up and uh, they'll be ready for the winter uh, to do all the joinery and stuff trying not to move them around too much because they'll be back so just doing them where they are All right, making a good dent in the sleeper pile. So I've got about 10, I think 10 there, that are ready for the planer. I'm gonna do 10 more while I got my friend with me. Try and get 20 through. And there's the ones already planed over there. So yeah, this, uh, this greenhouse project is gonna be getting built here. So I'm gonna roll this. Once I've done with it, I'm gonna roll this out of the way. We're gonna build the vents in here four different vents, build them in here, take them apart, take them outside and assemble them, show you the model. So here is the new model, the old one's destroyed um, because it didn't really work properly, it was going to be difficult to put together, um, this is a little scale ruler I made of it, it's uh, six and a half meters long by three and a half meters wide, um, it's made of five inch um, timbers which is what we're um, milling and machining down at the moment the yeah, five inch 125 millimeters um, it's con it's constructed of four individual bents they're called so this is one whole piece that will be constructed in here in the workshop and then tipped into place uh, and then we'll do that four times and then it's tied together by these which will be mortise and tenon on the sides can you see that okay yeah be mortise and tenon mortise and tenon in in the ends and then splined in the middle because there won't be enough in the five inch post to do mortise and tenons um, the whole thing will be covered in glass probably toughened glass a door on this end and a window on this end so that's uh, that's what we're prepping all for i'm not going to start it yet it's going to be winter in the workshop doing the joinery with the plan of getting this up for the growing season next year. Okay, a few different views. Yeah, that is what we're uh, milling the timbers for. It's gonna be quite the greenhouse. It's just what I need, isn't it? Another massive project to take on, but it's good. I like to have a varying different projects going on around and at the moment getting everything ready so that we can get this done over the winter and I'm going to have lots of nice content, lots of nice videos to put out. So yeah I've been using all my tools in this workshop at the moment without a dust collection and it's been a real pain because just the dust just goes everywhere I keep on having to blow the whole workshop out with a, with a leaf blower um, and basically yeah I'm ready to uh, get a dust collector so I'm about to go out now and pick one up make a box for this and then we can put all that wood I've just milled through it and take the dust away nice and cleanly. Good morning everyone. I got myself a, uh, a dust extractor. It's uh, made by a company called Fox. Uh, I bought it, they didn't give it to me or anything. Um, yeah, it seems really good. It was, it's, you know, it's not expensive, uh, but it seems really good quality actually. I haven't used it really much yet. 
but I'm pleased with it. Yeah, so this machine that I wanted to use it on is a, called a planar thicknesser. Uh, I think in America, which a lot of my viewers are from America, these aren't that common. At least I don't see them very often on American videos. Um, but anyway, normally you, in, in America, from what I understand, you tend to have a jointer and then you have a, a separate thickness planer. We get them here as well, thickness planers, but we tend to use a jaw machine, the jointer or planer on top, and the thicknesser is underneath. But that does give a bit of an issue with dust extraction for it. So that's what I'm going to do today and build a box that's removable, that sits on top for when you're thicknessing and goes underneath when you're planing and then we'll be able to hook it up to the dust extractor uh, ready for when my mate comes and helps me because last time I fed all that wood through here it was horrible in here like it was just a horrible job so yeah let's make a dust extractor hood so I've just made a pretty basic plywood box and this is going to be the front these sit just a little bit high to allow for the blade which will be spinning here just cut a hole in the front I noticed that this uh, piece of drainage pipe I had lying around, it's just an off cut from one of the drainage for this building there's this nice flare on it so I just cut an interference bit sized hole and that slides in there tight I could put some silicone around that if I wanted but then that is going to sit in there and that will be our outlet and um, I might put some little angles or something if it ends up collecting sawdust in the bottom. But we'll see. I just added an extra bit of support to this because obviously it's going to get moved about quite a bit. I've done a kerf cut through the hole and just clamping that up and that's going to squeeze that together tight on there. So put some glue and stuff in the back of it. Tighten this down. Well, that actually worked really well. Put a lovely, lovely surface on the wood anyway. I sharpened the blades the other day and only just a couple of chips flew out. It's great. Let's have a look and see what happened inside the box. Okay, most of it just settled inside the box, but I'm not surprised about that because there's a bit of a lip in the bottom. But as I did more, you know, as the level filled up, it would start getting sucked away. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. And it's taking the dust, the fine dust, and then, you know, if I've only done a few bits, I can just. Right, now let's try it the other way. This way it goes on this. There. That comes up to the ground, out the way. Up there somewhere. Up over there or something. Just looks out of the way. The bend's not ideal, let's see that. Right, put that on there. And I'm just going to clamp it to the fence for now, um, but I have the uh, the guard points here, which I can put a metal rod, find a nice piece of rod the right size that can come up and clamp it down from the top. Yeah, planed up a lovely piece of oak. I took quite a deep cut and hardly any sawdust came out. There's no dust in here. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, there's a coat of oil on it. So now I can uh, use this machine without really worrying so much about, you know, dying of dust related illness. <laughs> All right, we can uh, get to work now. Oh, I just bent over to pick something up. Hit my head off the corner of the uh, table saw there. <laughs> yeah. Never mind, I have to put a little cover over that or something. Yeah, pretty painful that. Never mind, it's not too bad. Say a little cut. Morning everyone. So uh, 
nice and early in the morning we've got a sunny and windy day today wind turbines going sun's out it's early so we haven't got much power at the minute so i've got to do a bit of tinkering about and uh, get my blades sharpened and stuff um while the power builds up and then i'm gonna finish off these posts getting them through the planer couldn't film yesterday because my friend doesn't really want to be on uh, camera but today I'm on my own so it'll be alright. Alright let's get these blades sharpened up and uh, sort it out a bit. While I was waiting for my friend yesterday I made this uh, fence for the bandsaw. Quite cool, just plywood. You can slide back and forth. Got this locking nut on the back. Here. And it's all supported and square. So yeah, that's going to be a big help because I'm going to use that for speeding up the process of cutting tenons because that's part of the preparations for this greenhouse build. So this dirty old sleeper wood uh, really causes a lot of blunting to the blades because there's even though I brush down the outside of them and I've hosed them off to try and keep the dust down and stuff, but you know there's still bits of sand and little stones and things in the outside and it destroys the blades. Um, but this is okay because okay, these blades came with it and they're already old and I've got the ability to sharpen them. So I'm going to get these sharpened up. I use this Robert Sorby Pro Edge uh, belt uh, sander and it's excellent, really pleased. Right, I was taking some really heavy cuts and the dust is all, dust extraction has got all uh, clogged up. Um, it just started spitting everywhere. And what happens is when you take a heavy cut, the strands come off too long and uh, can't get past that thing. So that's coming off. I'm pretty sure it's designed to stop like sticks and things getting in, but uh, it's got a metal fan. I'm pretty confident that fan can, uh, can handle it. So we're gonna get rid of that. That's taking like a seven mil cut. Right, I got that. time going through. These ones are getting stacked up. Oh, let's give her a push. And I am done. Dust extractor worked great. Workshop's a bit of a mess because it the bag got filled up a couple of times and um you know it overflew and I couldn't stop the, that current beam from going through so I had to carry on so I got to remember to empty the bag. Um, but I was doing like five mil cuts with the planer thicknesser and it was taking the chips away no problem after we cut away those little things so that was really good. We now have 28 dry hardwood posts worth an absolute fortune but didn't actually cost that much comparatively and that is enough timber to do our workshop, uh, workshop greenhouse. Sorry I can't hardly talk I'm so knackered. 
every one of those timbers has gone through that planer around eight times. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I still need some more, but that is the bulk of it done. It's gonna be the end of this video. It's coming out to you today, Friday. The day it comes out is uh, the day I finished it. I've literally just finished doing these now, and then I'm gonna go and edit it and uh, put it out to you lot. And uh, hopefully doing the floor of the top workshop next week. It might be the week after. Not sure shit, depends when I can get um, concrete. But yeah, that's going to be the end of it. I'm going to tidy up a bit, have the weekend off, and uh, get this video out to you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.